Hello YouTube, today we're going to be talking about the correlation coefficient, known as R. You'll probably, in like real life, if you're doing research or you're reading some scientific paper, they'll just have the letter R there. They won't really say what a correlation coefficient is. Generally, people tend to forget what the correlation coefficient is because no one really says correlation coefficient. They just say, oh, what's your R? Um, and what is R? Well, R is what measures the strength of a linear relationship. Um, specifically between two variables, this would be the formula for calculating your R. Now, it looks kind of complex, but we're actually going to break it down and make it pretty simple. Um, again, I want to emphasize this is only for two variables. Um, if you saw a previous video I'm making or made, um, I have the correlations between height and weight. If you're doing a weight guessing game, you can check out that video also. But here were the points that were calculated. So if your height were 62 inches, your weight would be 135. Um, and that's kind of what it relates to here. So based on height, is there a positive, negative, or some sort of relationship between height and weight? That's kind of what you're testing here. And this R will test you or will test the strength of that relationship. Is there a positive relationship? It appears so as weight increases, weight is, or excuse me, as height increases, weight increases. But how strong is it in terms of a linear regression or an estimation? So let's look at these values here. First thing what you want to do is you're going to take your x and y values and you're going to calculate the mean of each of those. So the x bar of the height, which is the mean of the heights, is 67. You again add all those variables up and divide it by the total. 6, yeah, which is divided by 6, so add all those up, divide by 6. And then weight, do the same thing, add those numbers up, divide by 6, you get 160. Now you simply just, uh, what I did was I segmented this into a table for each component in the R formula. So xi minus x bar, that's simply 62 minus 67, which is negative 5. Then I would do 64 minus 67, and I would get all these values, negative 3, negative 1, 1, 3, 5. And I do the same thing, but with y. So you do 135 minus 160, which gives you negative 1, excuse me, negative 25. Then you do 145 minus 160, that would give you 15, or negative 15. Then you do all the subtraction, and you get these numbers. Now you simply multiply these two together. If you get negative 5 times 25, you get 125, negative 3 times negative 15 would give you 45, and then here are the remaining values um, as well, so you just multiply across. Now what you do is you look at the what's in the blue column there, and you're going to square each of those terms, so 5 squared is 25, and 9, 3 squared is 9, 1 squared is 1, so on and so forth, and you do the same thing with the green column here, so 25 squared is 1, or 625, and then 15 squared is 225, 5 squared is 25, and so on. Now what you do, notice how the R uh, formula here has the sum of. So what we do is we're going to take the sum of the product of xi minus x bar and yi minus y bar. You add all those up and you get 350. So 125 plus 45 plus 5 plus 5 plus 45 plus 125 gives you 350. Then again, notice how it's the sum of the... Um, xi minus x bar squared, so you add all those digits up, and you get 70, same thing with the y, and you get 1750. Now you simply plug that into the formula there, so the sum of the product, which is on the top, is we found to be 350, and then the uh, squared sum of just the x component is 70, and the squared sum of the y component is 1750. You plug those in, take the square root, and you get your r to be 1. Now what does that mean? Well, to kind of understand what that means exactly, R always falls between negative 1 and 1. 1 meaning this. It's a direct positive linear relationship. Negative 1 means it's a direct negative linear relationship. So um, this kind of measures the strength. Since we are exactly at 1, it's in a closed interval, that means we, this is exactly a positive linear relationship. So let's plot the points here. Um, so I go ahead, went ahead and did that, and by the way, this equation up here is kind of like your y equals mx plus b, the equation of a line, but in statistics form, um, I'll make, I made a video on that sort of, um, but notice how the points here, the black points are exactly on this line. Now that means that this relationship is strong, it's a positive relationship, and it looks as follows. Now what if we had points up here, um, all around here, um, I'm just drawing like random data points then this relationship, R, would not equal 1 anymore. It would probably be more like 0.8. So you can see that the relationship is still positive and linear. It's just not as strong as if it were to be on every single uh, point on that line. 
For example, if I were to get rid of all these points, this is a perfect linear uh, positive relationship here. So it R tests the strength of that relationship. So um, that's pretty much it here, but I will go over some more examples in a moment. Okay, so look at these random, I guess, scatter plots of data. Um, and if you wanted to see, okay, let's see what this relationship looks like. This looks like a positive relationship here. So that's a positive correlation. R might be something around maybe 0.7. Um, that could be like an example of the strength. So it's a positive R value, which means a positive relationship, and the strength is 0.7, which is close to 1. So it's a strong relationship. Now, what if we have this one here? That is um, a negative relationship, so R is going to be a negative number, but it's also uh, fairly strong as well. We'll say it's about the same, 0.7, this is approximately. Um, again, here, this one, well, we could do this. Like, it, there's not, it, you can't really find an exact relationship here, so it's no correlation, which has an R value of about 0. Now, what about this one? This one is kind of... Um, kind of positive, but it doesn't seem to be quite as strong. Um, so it can be a positive relationship, but it might be a weak positive relationship of, say, 0 0.3. Um, so that's kind of how you can interpret R value or your correlation coefficient, as you may hear it, but you mostly will hear it, hey, what's your R kind of thing. So I hope this helped um, with this basic example here um, and breaking up the components here. Remember, this is only for two variables. Keep that in mind But the um, for when it comes to linear regression. So I hope this helped and keep practicing.